Well, it's nine o'clock. So let's call the meeting to order at nine o'clock and we'll start with the uh, roll call. Uh, in the absence of the secretary at the moment, I will do it. Uh, Ferrari here. Bueller? Bueller? Right. Here, Kulo? Here. Close? Here. Moro? Here. Swanson? Here. Winner? Wiener? Here. And that's here. So we are all here. We have a quorum. Uh, we have the minutes from the June 17th meeting. Um, I can see the graph. Did everybody that one? Is there any changes? No changes. Uh, we have to vote just to accept them. Yeah. yeah. Somebody make a motion. No, you, you don't need to vote on that. Just say if there, nobody has any discussion about it, then it's just, just accepted. Yeah. Oh, then they're accepted. Uh, the next item is the election of a vice chair and a secretary. I sent out an email uh, last week, I think it was, to ask if anybody was interested to either to raise their hand here or to let me know in advance. I did receive a response from two people, one for the vice chair and one for the secretary. Thanks them very much. So uh, I guess I would ask if anybody else is interested in either of those positions. Uh, so Pat has graciously raised his hand and said he would like to be the vice chair for a year and Kenny would be the secretary. So I know that John uh, did not really use the secretary of his own, but I think I would like to do that. So I'm gonna give you a little work, Kenny. <laughs> I retired, I guess I can do it. That's right, great. So I think we it does say election of both of those. So I think we need to have a, a, a motion seconded that uh, Patty Akula would be the vice chair and Teddy Swanson would be the secretary. Okay. I so move. I move that uh, Pat Akula and uh, Teddy Swanson, well, Pat as vice chair and Teddy Swanson as secretary. Uh, I would move that they be um elected thank you mike second second uh all in favor uh, aye was unanimous thank you very much uh chair's report uh i can only say that this is new for me and it looks like the zoom hybrid is zoom for it's new for all of us uh ted and i were at a uh training session with Elizabeth on Tuesday, and we learned how to work this thing, but since it's stuck now on the, on the screen, I don't think we're gonna be using that too much, but uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, I talked to John uh, McDonald quite a bit about what he was doing with the committee, and I really don't have any plans to change anything. Uh, probably except that I might use a really use the secretary. Uh, so great. And, you, and anybody sees something that I'm doing that's a misstep or whatever, please call me out. Let me know. This is all new to me as well. So uh, any correspondence and announcements? I can bring up a couple of things. Okay. Um, we have an additional outside tournament that will happen in August. So we now have two outside tournaments. These are Monday events in August. We have two more in October. So there's four more outside events between now and the end of the year. That should help our income um, uh, bottom line with those terms. We're actually going to try here goal, which we haven't done the last few years because of COVID. But there's been a nice response from outside events. And uh, people want to do those. So that's really good. Also got a request um, from Akalani's, the girls' golf team, which they have uh, uh, played in the fall of here for several years. We've got Akalani's and supported Akalani's golf program. And they will start in uh, mid-August. And uh, they plan on Wednesday and Friday afternoons like they've done before. Um, generally, the schools have a difficult time fielding um, uh, girls teams, um, they've got a pretty good group this year, so hopefully they'll have a full squad. And you know, we like to support junior golf, so I think that's a good thing to do on those two games. And they play on dollar in the afternoon at 3.30. And for those of you who don't know, a long time um, 
He was involved in a lot of things like the Men's Invitational. He was uh, at one time on the board several years ago. Lee Silverstein, who moved away from the Oregon, he passed away just a couple of days ago. Uh, he had been battling cancer for quite a long time. He was involved in a lot of events here, including one of the big supporters of junior golf in the entire Bay Area. He brought the uh, Cisco Junior Championship here where we host that each spring, um, where we have 26 high schools from out all over the Bay Area that come in and play. Ross Martin has been fantastic in supporting that event, and uh, the kids really appreciate it. Um, it's, it's been a wonderful event to, to host. Uh, his second chair, he made it to this tournament this year, which is the last time I saw him, and um, he was really struggling. But he made it out from Oregon, and um, his vice chair uh, contacted me yesterday and said they'd love to continue that junior event. So I'll probably bring that to the board uh, when that time comes, but we'll try and keep that event going uh, in his memory. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, residents Forum, nobody put a slip in, and I don't see anybody. There's another person that joined here. Uh, but there's no hand raised, so I don't think there's going to be any president input. So we'll move on to the next item in the GR board report. Ted? Uh, I don't have a whole bunch to report. It was um, except for the concern for water, the availability of water. Um, and I know that uh, Mark is going to be talking a little bit more about that. Um, and uh, yesterday in our planning meeting, we spent uh, over an hour and a half talking about the water situation in West Park, how we can help to change it. I'm not sure that we came to any conclusion yet, but it is going to be an ongoing talk from the board about how we can uh, improve the situation and improve our use of, of uh, water. Uh, there, uh, Water um, recycling plant is, uh, is still has a few more hurdles to get over, and uh, we're going to proceed with that to to see where it's going to go. It did um, um, come up to there's it's going to cost a little more than we thought to do the recycling plant, and um, but it's not really slated as it on a date for any time of when we're going to start working on it yet. Question. Last month, when we had the uh, Contra Costa visiting us here, I rode with the guy from Contra Costa, and he we were talking about this, and he said that Contra Costa uses uh, recycled water from a plant in Martinez, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they have a pipe, and it's been there since 19, I think it was 55 or something like that. The the water via the pipe only goes far as far south as Pleasant. Hill, and it doesn't, and there is no talk of bringing it into the Walnut Creek area, Lafayette, any, anywhere, you know, anywhere around here. Mm -hmm. There, there, there is, uh, there's been some talk about the availability of an old gas line. Uh, it was investigated. It's going to take a ton of work to rebuild that line. It's not necessarily the best condition underground. So, um, with all of the stuff, everything going on. Um, I think that we are still going to be on our own doing our own recycling plant uh, because it's the right, you know, we feel it's the right thing to do is to move in that direction. And I think that um, uh, there are uh, other counties other than Contra Costa County, like down south, there's more uh, people getting on board doing uh, recycling plants and uh, uh, they are, uh, they're seeing the value in it. It's probably going to be a pretty much a common thing, I think, in California, if, you know, down the line, uh, because there has to be something done with the limited amount of water we have. And that's something that's always been in California, whether we're in God or not, they've always talked about water. So I think it's coming, It's but we have some hurdles to get over yet. Quick question. I, I <coughs> didn't get in on the Thursday thing. So the reclamation project has passed the GR board. It has not passed. That's it not. still has some hurdles to get over. We're, you know, there's there's a lot of different agencies to deal with. There's a lot of different things that have to be gone through to get it to the point where we can actually throw a shovel on the ground. 
So uh, uh, we're still at the point of narrowing those down. And when we have all the information, like I said, we were talking something about uh, 12, 13 million to build, and now we're up to 18 million to build. So it is it's considerable increase in money. So as we go down and find out more stuff, we don't know where we're at yet as to what it would be to put it together. Can I, I talk to people who are not developers and what kind of our entry and so forth? And everybody I've spoken with is in favor of it. I mean, even if they're not out there on the golf course, they appreciate the the green and the fire break and all of that. So I think we need to really promote it. And the, and, of those. and the mutual I live in, Mitchell One, is starting a water program also. They're getting very, uh, uh, it, it's it's something on everybody's mind. And, and we know we have to do something. And, uh, and if it's, uh, it's it, I'm hearing more and more from a lot of other people that you know, they're, they're leaning in that direction. So I would, I would add that um, Mark and I, six years ago, went to uh, visit with the Outlook Country Club because they were um, exploring <clears throat> have been exploring for about 15 years whether to do water a water recycling facility at the other country but still haven't done that which is uh, concerning it's more little maybe more complicated there because they don't have like a, a single community like we do here um, and they've got uh, an irrigation district San Ramon Valley irrigation district which complicates the water so sewer um, when your sewer, when you flush, the moment you flush your toilet, you no longer own the sewage, fortunately. Somebody else does, which is the sanitary district. And, but once you, once you recycle water, the ownership changes from the sanitary district to the water district. So in our case, East Bay Mud. East Bay Mud also does sewer, but they don't do sewer here. They do sewer on the west side of the tunnel. So, um, and they only provide, we, East Bay Mud only provides recycled water to Emeryville. Central Sand only provides recycled water to Pleasant Hill. But the Contra Costa Country Club is the, really, I think, their only um, user of their water. And they have evaluated it, they refuse to bring water to this part of the county. So, uh, recycled water, um, which there's no incentive for the sanitary district to do that because the water ownership changes to the local water, it becomes East Bay Mud property then. Hmm. So it's complicated, it's not, a, it's not easy. We've had a unanimous decision on every vote that the board has taken since 2017 on water reclamation until this year. Um, and it's not clear that there's unanimous support in any, in fact, there's not unanimous support any longer on the board. So it's, and it's gotten very, very expensive. So we, um, you know, I've said to this committee many times over the years that if you are interested in this, um, which as golfers, you should be, you are the direct beneficiary of, of a green grass, especially during the drought. Um, and there's no assurance in the future that, that, that water will be available for golf course operators. Uh, last drought, we had a 40% mandatory reduction in water. Um, Mark, is there a mandatory reduction yet? No. Not so they, the East Bay Mud, is, yeah, East Bay Mud has not yet mandated, but it is just around the corner. Um, the, the reservoir levels are lower in this drought than they were in the last drought at the same point in time. So it's probable that there's going to be mandatory reductions, and they start with parks, medians, cemeteries, and golf courses. Those are deemed to be discretionary water users as opposed to residential and commercial use. Um, and so if you're interested in the politics of this, 85% of all the water in California is used by agriculture. But most of that water is available to agriculture for free. Um, and so it's the residential and commercial users that end up footing the, paying the freight or footing the bill for both water reductions and mandatory surcharges that are imposed. So um, this is very complex. It's, it's a very complicated uh, undertaking. 
okay, you might not have heard of anybody objecting, but that's all I've heard are on the objections. There's a lot of people who are, especially over here on Cactus Court, um, yeah, they, they're very upset about it. Apparently, one of our board members said yesterday that um, they don't, this person's mutual does not anywhere near the golf course, but um, every person that person has spoken to has been a, has objected to water reclamation. It's expensive. It's, it's, we're now looking at $19 million if it's built in 2024. And um, every year after that, that it's not built, inflated, the current construction inflation rate is 19% a year. So add another $4 million to the project every year you extend longer. So it's, uh, you know, whether it's, whether it can happen or not, we don't have $19 million. So um, there's a lot of, lot of question marks. So hopefully, um, I mean, water reclamation makes a lot of sense, but uh, it's a, it's a tremendously expensive and complicated undertaking that um, probably we will end up in lawsuits over. So the residents that are at the end of Cactus Court, even though the facility if it was located there would be 300 feet from the nearest housing, doesn't matter. They're still upset about it and uh, they're threatening litigation. And if you move it here in, in the uh, golf maintenance yard, which is the other location that's under consideration, you're still, you're about 250 feet away from the nearest housing. So, but it's a little more out of sight, out of mind because it's overdrawn kind of on the golf course. Um, but the homes over here on uh, Crossmore Parkway, I'm sure we will be in the end if that becomes the favorite site. So, and that's the trouble that the Yellow Country Club has had. Um, the residents there are all of their arms about it. We've got multi million dollar housing around that golf course, and nobody wants to have to disclose to home buyers that there's this, that, you know, water, the polite way of saying it is a water recycling <laughs> the Cactus Park residents are happy to call it a sewage treatment facility. And so, anyway, that's some of the background. Are they objecting to the smell or the yeah. odor? I've seen some of that, or is it just in general? I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's both. Um, even though, so our consultant has said, uh, so what, what people think of when they think of re water recycling is when you come off the 80 off Bay Bridge and you go right before you go into the curve in case you over here to the 24, um, you do that loop to the right and then you're you're pivoting around the East Bay Mud Water Treatment Facility right there, which are big open tanks. It smells. And, and it doesn't smell particularly good. Right. Um, it doesn't smell as bad as it used to, though. So whatever they're doing, it's, it's actually improved. But they are open tanks. And if you go up to Central Sands facility up in Martinez for Pacheco, um, you, and you, if you tour that facility, they are great big open tanks. But that's not what this would be. This would be a fully enclosed facility. So, um, so it's not a big open tanks. But that's what people think is that that's what's going into their neighborhood. Obviously, this is going to be the big topic today because a lot of my report has to do with this. But I think I may be one of the few people that's actually visited the facility that they're building or talking about building here. They've done that down at Pacific Grove Golf Course. I toured the facility with the gentleman in charge of the facility and some of the golfers. I can tell you, as soon as you get 10 feet outside the building, there is no smell, nothing. Um, the only time you smell is when you're inside the facility up on top because it's recycled up, it comes down through the system. That's the only place you smell it. Um, and you can watch the process, it's absolutely amazing. But it is completely enclosed, it's been talked about. So I did that. Not long after that meeting we had at Diablo, I went down there to see that and get a tour. And it was amazing. And I'm sure the technology has gotten even better in the last six years as far as what they're able to do. But, you know, what Blake and I have been trying to do is we're almost paralleling the work being done on the re recycling center because we're doing as much as we can internally inside the golf course to conserve water and maybe have a long term plan that will help us mitigate the need for a very large facility. And, and, and you know, there, there's just so many, as Ted has talked about and Tim has talked, there's so many pitfalls in front of us before we get to the point where this is going in, uh, whether it's the residents or the size of the facility, the use of the water, where it's stored. I mean, it's, there's a lot of things that have to be handled, but hopefully we can mitigate it with some of the things we're doing currently. 
and my previous meeting, we talked about this is not a sewage treatment, but a, but a wastewater recycle. Okay, just remind me again of the difference. It's called a water recycling plant. Yeah, it's not. It's it, it it does use wastewater to do it, but it's recycling the water to make it into a uh, something that we can use in irrigation. I think that there are some plants around. There has been some talk about making it to all the way to portable water, so that you can recycle it all the way to just reusing it uh, as people could reuse it. But right now, all we're concerned with is getting something that we can use on our green belt area. So if it's not, if it is wastewater, it's waste coming from where, from from the you from the from the okay, washing machine, and you use your shower, and you use oh, the okay. toilet, yeah. whatever it comes from, comes from you. So about about ninety percent of the water or the, the wastewater in the sewer system is is liquid, is water. It, it's probably even a little bit more than that. So the difference, I guess, between uh, say a sewage treatment plant like up in Pacheco, um, or or there in East Bay Mud facility. They're, they have to take all everything, 100 percent of everything that's coming through the pipe, and process it, remove all the contaminants, remove the solids, remove the the flushable wipes that people flush that are not um, biodegradable. They have to remove all of that, and then take it to a point where they can deposit the treated water in this bed, or uh, process it a little bit further and use it, say, for irrigation in Emeryville or at a country cost to country club. Uh, and that's the level that we would be using is is that we are not going to be we will never be putting something in this that treats it to make it potable water it's drinkable that will, that will never be part of this equation so it, it will only be um what they will be doing they'll basically be skimming the 90 percent of the liquids redirecting that taking that out of the pipe putting it into another pipe pumping it to even whichever facility whether it's at cactus court or it's down here um, at the maintenance yard um, uh, treat it, there will be a, you know, this is the X factor, but there will be a small amount of solids that have to be processed. They will be removed, they will be packaged up, they're deodorified, however that works, and then um, they're removed by a truck. And then there's a certain amount that has to be pumped back into the sewer line um, north of where we pull it out, so we, so we don't process it twice. So you have a point of diversion, and then you go north of that point of diversion to put it back in. So um, it's not entirely efficient. Uh, I don't know what the efficiency rate is, but it's like 20% or something like that has to be put back into the sewer pipe. But it, at that point, it's, it's treated water, but there, it needs that flow to go back up to Martinez. I know it doesn't seem logical, but it's flowing north. So it feels like it's going uphill when you're flowing north, but it isn't. It's going into the treatment facility back up in Pacheco. And the whole process is on too. The whole, the whole thing all automated. It takes it takes possibly up to three people to operate the whole, but they have to have a special uh, training and special uh, uh, level of understanding of that before they can even take on that job. And they're really just absorbers when they're in there because this whole thing is automated. I'd be remiss in not mentioning that I live on Cactus Court. I can tell you that I get a lot of uh, pamphlets, whatever, a lot from the neighbors who are very concerned about this. I don't know what it's going to take to convince them, but at this point, I don't think there's anything that can be said or done that will convince them. Not about, like Mark went to the facility, you can have some of the leaders or something go to the facility and see what it's like. I'm not sure that there is any leadership, but that's a good point. And, and in yeah. fact, maybe that's something that can be organized if it gets to the point where Cactus Court is the site. Uh, I have no objections to it, obviously, because I am a golfer and, and I really want to see this happen. However, I do. I am concerned about uh, you know, the neighbors' uh, issues. Uh, and to me, it would seem, uh, well, we have, I don't know that we've explored the fact that uh, what would the neighbors say or what would the community say if the work put into the maintenance yard in, in lieu of the So uh, 
I don't know, we're not there yet, maybe, or <clears throat> that's not going to have a decision made as to which location it's just they narrowed narrative down to those two. Yeah, practice court or the maintenance court. But all we keep hearing about is practice court. Uh, no, that's because right. your neighbor, that's because your resident, the neighbors have one reason. They're focused on that. Yeah. They're focused on that. Uh, but if we were to remove that focus and possibly let them, you know, just keep saying that it's an it either or situation, maybe we can then try to explore the other, the other location. So about two weeks ago, we had a meeting with the residents on Cactus Court, right. and uh, it was pretty well attended. There were, I don't know, 30. 30 or 40 people, and I think there were about that same number on Zoom. It was held over here at the event center. Um, all the facts were put on the table, all the information was put out there, and people just didn't want to accept the information. And so it, it got a little testy. Um, it's unfortunate that it just the misinformation is, it, it really is amazing. It's literally the game of telephone we all played as children. Where you whisper something into somebody's ear and go around the room, and it's something else entirely when it comes out the other side. Okay, I'm sure we'll be. Can I just ask you yeah. one last question? Is the biggest complaint the fact that there'll be a building there, or is it the smell? Because if it's the smell, I've played many times at Contra Costa, and you don't smell anything when you walk by where their water is being spilled. Contra Costa, so the, the recycling is being done up in Martinez or at Pacheco, and then it's being pumped just like to Contra Costa. So there's, you've got clean water, and really it's, you wouldn't, it's not just like a drink it, but you can drink it. It's that clean. Yeah, the objection is all of the above. Oh. You know, they're concerned about their property values, they're concerned about the fact that there's going to be an industrial type facility within 100 yards from where they live. Uh, they have misinformation about trucks coming up and down Cactus Court to, to service and to, uh, whatever. Uh, all of the things that are presented by them, I think, uh, I should say all of it, a lot of it is just misinformation and closed mindedness. Is there a, I think that's true. <laughs> I think the profit, I know we kind of have to move on with other stuff, but the property values will be more affected if the golf. If the golf course is affected, then because of the recycling plant, there uh, if we if we lose the golf course or we lose the ability to have that as a safety area, uh, we would lose the uh, the beauty of that whole green belt area there. You will definitely see an effect in everybody's uh, uh, value of their houses, and we still won't have a recycling plant to be able to protect it. So I think when you start looking, this is a this no matter where it goes, it could be looked as a plus for the community, and and if it doesn't go, then you could see a definite minus for the community. Yeah. I mean that's not that's not good news for these people that just won't accept that. Okay, let's uh, move on. Club reports, uh, Robin. Um, yes, I'm Robin Rowe, the representative of the Teamers. I just made all the person. <laughs> I don't have a lot to report. Um, we have one new member since last month, and uh, membership's now 106. Um, we're just well into our tournament season right now. Seems like three weeks back to back or something here, and we just finished our blue and white. Um, next Thursday, we have uh, guest day jointly with the Niners. And um, we have a good turn turnout so far. I think a few more 18ers. I think there are more Niners signed up than 18ers. And um, we'll do our class eight tournament in August. Um, that's about all I have to report. I have one question um, for uh, how many hackers are there in your group? Oh, we're now with 238. Wow. Okay. 238. Thank you. There was some discussion that came up here. We're going to considering doing a rules tournament in August and who all we want to include in there and how many we can get in the event center. So I don't want it to get too large, but anyway, we're working on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, For the Niners. Uh, we currently have 174 active members and six social members. And uh, we have a lot of play on Thursdays. We have over 88 players. Um, and so, yes, they keep playing. 
but I think we have a really uh, active program and everybody's very happy with play and participation. Just to put that in perspective, the Niners before the pandemic would be in the 40 to yeah, 45 to 40, range, so yeah. you nearly double right. the amount of play on a Thursday morning. <laughs> and I'd like to just say that I did mention the water reclamation issue at the last board meeting, and um, if they if people were not living on practice court, they're like oblivious to the fact that there's this thing out there, you know. And they were really, really interested in finding out more. They want a little blurb that they can use when they're talking with their neighbors and friends. So it's sort of like just me mentioning it's the board meeting. It's sort of they, um, you know, found out something new and are very interested in, in doing something to help explain the issue to the Crossmore public. Sir, have you in your board meetings any conversations about using the golf genius for, oh, yeah. for pain? They're using it. Yeah, but for paying for sure. events. I'm sorry, for paying for yeah, using they're having trouble card. with getting Stripe. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. the payment exactly. Issue. They cannot get and they have to keep going through the men's association. Well, we did one event with Jamboree. Oh, right. That yeah. was the only one. And I was working with uh, who was can't remember who I was working with the, with the Niners, but this goes back a month, and I haven't seen any activity in terms of. Uh, it seems like uh, Judy Stillman is our captain, Judy, yeah. and she's been going back and forth with whoever she needs to talk to about Stripe, but she can't get it to work. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, for with the Niners Weekly, they don't take a fee. So on a weekly basis, oh, right. they don't even okay. sign up and have a fee. The only time they have a fee is just two or three times a year for their guest day or something yeah, like that. Right. So their usage of the strike is so minimal. It's really not an issue. It is right. not week to week for that. No, it. it's not. So okay. we're still thinking of sticking with checks and not even using the strike. Sure. Since, you know, we don't have that. Since like, you only have a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kat? Uh, the men's club is uh, currently has 333 members, and um, that seems to be a number that's uh, uh, holding steady uh, at this time of the year. Don't expect it to increase much other than for fans and people coming in to Rossmore, or new people, I should say, coming into Rossmore. Uh, we are continuing with our tournaments as well. Uh, we just held our uh, Another uh, home and home event. Uh, we're getting a uh, good turnout from our membership for that. Unfortunately, we're finding that some of the other clubs are not having as much uh, of their members being able to come on over here. We're not sure what's going on, and we're trying to find out uh, how to uh, to read that. Uh, that that would affect any of our events coming forward. Uh, one of the things we have done that's been beneficial, we think, is uh, we've been wondering over the years, how do we get more of our members to participate from the 300 members plus? You always have uh, a, a core number that participate in the uh, golf tournaments and events, and that's somewhere around 75, 80 people. Uh, that's really a core number. We found that this year we've uh, taken the opportunity to open up play not only on the dollar course, but also on the Creekside course and have tournaments on Creekside for the nine hole group. There's a lot of members who play on the nine hole group, uh, on the nine hole course, uh, who have not participated because they don't feel they can you know, do anything on 18. They do as well. So we've opened up play uh, mostly scrambles on the nine hole course, and it has been extremely well. So we're very happy about that, and uh, we look to continue to expand that. In fact, we had a meeting uh, this past Monday, the fourth meeting, and one of the board members mentioned that we should be doing more scrambles on the 19, on the 18 hole course because it is such a a popular thing to do. In addition to the more competitive uh, types of events, um, let's see. One other thing we're doing is uh, in line with what Mark was talking about uh, 
for the youth on the course. Uh, we're looking to uh, have another first tee event uh, this summer. Uh, I've already been in contact with the uh, first tee group. They're ecstatic to be able to come on over here again. Uh, so I'm uh, trying, we'll work with Mark to see a, a good date we can have for them some afternoon this summer. I'm thinking about uh, maybe just 12 players or something in that amount so we can get the uh, key times accordingly. Uh, yet to be worked out, but the first tee uh, is something that I have uh, an interest in pursuing further, and the club has given me a go ahead to, to, uh, to do that as well. Um, that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Question for Pat. On one thing. Yeah. If the if you I understand that you know you're in within a group that if you're gonna have people who want to only play nine, not the 18. Mm -hmm. If you had such good um, participation on the scramble on the nine, could you do three scrambles on the three nine holes on the on the same day? And that way it would give the nine or the people who play nine holes would get a chance to experience the 18 hole and maybe not think it's such a tough thing for them to play on anymore. You know what I mean? We'll do three scrambles. Each one is only nine holes. Um, Just the thought. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Um, it's a good thought. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. If you're getting good participation there, you, you've got 300 people to spread over 18 holes. Or 27 holes. We'll never have 300 <laughs> uh, I think it has to do a lot with the ability or the, the, the uh, availability of the golf course itself to uh, use that, uh, uh, use the dollar course or use the creek slide for a full day. Or, uh, usually it's the club, as you know, gets, gets the morning hours uh, until around noon time, and then it's opened up to the uh, rest of the golf course. So it's something that we can look into and work with Mark on if it seems to be something that would work. Okay, uh, let's move on to the staff reports. I guess this oh, is Kurt, Kurt. all the year. What? Kurt. Oh, I'm sorry. Kurt. I already wrote down that we had 238 members. <laughs> 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 well, it is. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have 238 members. Um, so we're, we're getting up there to the uh, the men's club. <laughs> we're striving for you, <laughs> but um, you know we uh, uh, we have our uh, monthly scramble uh, tomorrow on dollar. Uh, second time will be on dollar uh, for a uh, scramble. We have one hundred and two participants. I think some dropped. I think we're down to ninety seven, but. In, in that area. And so uh, we're definitely getting more participation these days. Um, and uh, to your point, um, Ted, uh, you know, the since we've uh, started playing dollar, our interest level has increased. Um, people have really, I, I think within the club, the interest level in dollar has increased. So I think more people, I hear more people now playing dollar from time to time than used to just play on the night. So I think there is a benefit to, uh, to you know, the club switching. Having, it, it kind of, ex for people who are kind of stuck on one course, it exposes the other course. And I think uh, people get uh, some good, uh, uh, good experiences. So. But we're looking forward to playing tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're starting at three thirty, and uh, then having a dinner afterwards. And uh, then in uh, August we have uh, a uh, out of the sand clinic, which is going to be extremely popular. Be aware. <laughs> we already, I think we've already got the. Especially when they actually get out of sand. <laughs> it's probably one of the most popular clinics coming up because everybody, oh, I got to be part of that one. So, that, that, so we're, we're having that, that clinic then in August, and then in August uh, 20th will be our next uh, scramble back on uh, Creekside. So I think we had 13 for the pitch clinic on Wednesday, which was nice. Uh, so, yeah. 
I, I, I again, though, just like most of the clubs, we're seeing the stir and, and participation. And, uh, it still, uh, still is amazing, you know, out of uh, 238 members, 100 participate in our main event. So there is, it is kind of. Where are the other people? Why are they in the club? And I think every club asks that question. <laughs> and so, um, so that's all right. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, Mark. I do have a report here, but what I'd like to do is just take like a one minute break because I'm going to run this copy really quick over at the golf shop and be right back. So let's take like a one minute for me to go do that and I'll be right back and start my report. I'm just going to read this so I can get better at the copy. So be right back. Let's go. So, yeah. Looking at last month's uh, minutes, there's a whole bunch of stuff from the reports from the different clubs, but on and on and on. How does that get in there? Do you submit something? Well, this, this is being, this this is being recorded. Hmm? This is being recorded, and then that is, that's where it comes from. Oh, and we also submit reports yeah. so following the living that does that. I mean, I guess, or yeah, Deborah. Well, I mean, it used to be Deborah. I, don't know. Yeah. I think it's her secretary now. Elizabeth so, has been asking for yeah. uh, reports. I have a question about I can't, at one time I found them, but now I can't find the minutes on the website. Where do I go? You know, I can see it says there's, there's a column that says minutes, but it's paled out, you know, so you can't click on it. It's not in the uh, assembly. It should be assembly. It's in the assembly. The email Elizabeth and Nova belong to assembly. In, yeah. It's in the you, email that Elizabeth sends out yeah, for the meetings. It has the agenda on it. And, and I can also, find the agenda and all the reports and everything like that, but I can't find the end of it. There is a link on that. Oh, okay. You have to click. Okay. It says meeting title. If you click on that meeting title and open it to the browser, then you can see all the reports. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. It, yeah, it's it's a link in that email. Okay, thanks everybody for letting me do that. I was uh, something came up this morning. I wanted to share it with you. So, let's get to my report, uh, the golf uh, management report. Uh, we'll start with uh, just the numbers. Uh, hopefully, everyone saw the report or has it with them. Uh, the golf facility is again seeing excellent numbers for this month. We. Uh, did 7,285 rounds compared to, well, pretty close, 7,190 last year, still an increase. More importantly, we've collected uh, quite a number there, um, 100 and, oh yeah, $944,000 so far this year compared to last year at 817,000. So the money is very good. You can see the month increase too, 115 compared to last year. So the numbers, are bearing themselves out, and we continue as we went around the table here. We continue to be very busy. When you get into a little bit of detail, for instance, on the rounds part, you'll see that under cards on the far side of the percentage change, card rounds are actually down slightly, uh, 6.1%, but green fees paid are up a little bit, 3.3. The big number difference, if you go down farther, it says total guests, 19.6% increase in guest play. So people bringing guests out, people having their guests out to play. It's been a tremendous increase. As I mentioned earlier, look at the tournament line, 431% increase. So you can see, I mean, we didn't do much the last couple of years because of COVID. And, and this puts us on par with where we would have been maybe in 2018 uh, with the number of rounds for tournaments. So it's, it's good to see the return of the outside play because there is significant money uh, to be made with those when we do those Monday events. Um, so no question, even though the rates went up uh, this last year, um, that it didn't affect play at all. You know, people are willing to pay that, so we're well within the range when we look at our fees. Uh, again, overall with the receipts, very good um, numbers there, good increases. Um, when you get to the golf shop, um, each category is up except for menswear, but that should change a bit this month because we finally got the men's club shirt in. And uh, those have been selling very well. So uh, that's something we've been waiting for due to 
um, availability and, and even getting the logo on this darn shirt, it took a little longer than I suspected than getting that done. But that number should change significantly in menswear. And then lesson drop, but last year's lessons were just incredible. Um, as people got into the game or started or got back into the game, we gave an enormous amount. Still up from what we previously done, but lessons are, are down compared to last year. Other categories are up sometimes significantly. I think uh, when you look at golf balls, oh wow, amazing, almost double. Um, so uh, maybe we need to get more lessons because people are losing golf balls. I don't know what that, that is. <laughs> or maybe people are just buying, now not playing with the old, old golf, golf balls. They're, they're, uh, playing with new ones, clubs up significantly, which is nice to see because sometimes availability of stock has been difficult. Anyway, good to see that the shop is is doing well along with the numbers. Um, any questions about the the charts or the the numbers there? As far as no, anything I can answer on those pages. Okay. Um, by uh, just start on the first by mid July, you know, the compression of the golf course. This is true every year, is at a maximum. I mean, the play has now been going on for several months at a very high level. We no longer have any natural water that we may have gotten. Uh, irrigation does do some, but it's not like uh, the cool days that you get in during the winter or during spring. So now it's getting hotter more continuously, and that puts a lot of pressure. So, Blake and I always talk about the 60 days that are mid-July through mid-September when we feel like we're just holding on to what we have as far as turf. We're going to lose some between now and then. There will be a browning out effect in some areas. You may see a thinning of, of grass, whether it's in the fairways, around the greens, um, certainly in the roughs. It's just going to happen. There may even appear a few cracks in some areas because some areas just aren't going to irrigate as well as others or maybe under some stress due to the the high heat. So uh, that will happen. The good thing is we will cool off. And, and by the time we get to mid-September, first part of October, I mean, it changes again. The environment changes again. So it gives us a chance to recover. But we are definitely entering that part. As I mentioned here, and we'll talk about at some length coming up, East Bay Mud, July 1, 8% surcharge to the building. So um, that makes a difference. Several big tournaments are yet to come here in July. We just mentioned the Happy Hackers event coming up, but we have an 8 years guest day. Big Twilight, which are always in for 160 to 180 for those events, and that's scramble. We have the 18 years team play. Um, one of the nice things is golfers supporting golfers. Um, I've been trying to get cards for, for uh, whether it's an outside event or even our own events. It's been very difficult this year. A lot of the companies that rented cards to us are either A, out of business, or B, got rid of their uh, gas fleets because of gas prices. There just aren't any rental cards. And uh, in, for the 18 years East Bay team play, I was really struggling. I got a, a company in Rockland to give me a quote, and he said, Mark, you're not going to like those. So send it. I need the cards. I only needed 12, but I need the cards, please. I've been working with them to get this quote. He finally sent me the quote. It, by the time he added in the fuel charge for getting them down here, it was $752 a cart. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to go over the cart. Yeah. Um, for 12 carts. Isn't that amazing? Jeez. $750 to go back. So I uh, went back to uh, plan maybe F, and that was just reaching out to uh, our club members and asking if we could get 12 cards donated for their event. Because otherwise, the East Bay team flight was just not going to happen. We don't have any cards. There's no way. And uh, I asked for 12, and I got uh, 50 responses. Um, so that's that's the community coming together and being willing to uh, donate their cards for the event. So I, I thank them for that. And we'll be putting that together this next week and getting 12 cards so that we can even have that event. Um, we continue to get many projects done around the golf course. The 15th tee has really come out pretty darn well. I think most people enjoy that. Uh, we've done a lot of work there. Uh, the new cart path that, that, that kind of comes up by the tee, the, um, the plantings that have gone in with the trees, the, uh, the mulch and, and walkway. I mean, it really, as we've done in some areas around the golf course, I think it really makes a difference. It, it's, it's, it's multiple reasons why we do it, right? One is aesthetically, I think it looks better and it beautifies the area. Um, the second thing is it makes us more water efficient. And I'll talk about that again in just a moment. I have had one gentleman in that area who hasn't really appreciated the work and we've had an ongoing 
talk about the trees, the mulch in that area, because there used to be grass on that slope from the 15th tee down to the 14th green. It was just a grassy area and uh, kind of inefficient to, to keep watering it under the conditions that we understand we're all under. So we mulched it, and then once we mulched it, we didn't like that. And then we went ahead and planted some trees because we've done that in several areas. For instance, behind the seventh green of Creekside to the eighth tee, we put in a grove for the Happy Hacker presence. Kind of they, they put that money forward and we kind of beautify the area. And it does soften the mulch look when you have a large patch. When it's right along the roughs, it's no big deal. We have trees generally there anyway. But when you do large areas of mulch, it can look pretty stark. Uh, and uh, happy actors came through with us on, on that, I mean those. So we're trying to do kind of the same thing on that area. That didn't go over very well to me either. So it's, it's been an ongoing thing, but we're, we're trying to do what we can there. Does he um, live on Cactus Court? What's that? Does he live on Cactus Court? No, he does not live on Cactus Court. <laughs> 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 maybe he should, because that is another spot. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that's what we've been doing. The, the uh, renovation of the fourth tee, which was on our top, is the fourth tee dollar, is, is still looks like we're going to do that. And, and again, narrowing the landscape of the, the grass, the tee area, and redoing the hillside. And then also, we need to support around the blue tee there. It is sloughing off. It has been for a while. We really need to get that, maybe put in a support wall in the back, you kind of redo that whole area. So in level the T, things like that. So that'll be something we, we get to this year. Um, we have gone through some sickness in the golf shop. Hopefully nobody noticed, and that's good. They didn't notice for it, but we were uh, a little short uh, on many days this last uh, three weeks. And um, we're now back to 40 staff. So that's all I've got in, in this report here. Any any questions about that so far? How are we doing? Yes. The, Surcharge that they're putting on the eight percent surcharge is that just because we're a golf course? They know we use water, so they're going to get water some. user. Yeah, yeah. And that's no, where the that's the answer. Money just kind of says, "Here's what you guys got to pay." Right. You know, they go to their playbook, and and we have a playbook too now. Um, if you talk about just eight, ten years ago, when we had to cut back, I mean, literally, Blake and I would have run around with our what do we do? Right, we had no playbook. Of, we never been asked to cut back on water before. Now we have a playbook, and it goes in stages. Um, we've already entered the first stage. We announced that a long time ago. The area by uh, behind the seventh tee of Creekside, uh, by the pickleball courts, behind the second green of, of Dollar. Those areas were turned down long ago because we already knew we were in a water, an unfriendly water situation where we needed to conserve water. So we did those early this year. Um, that's the first page of our playbook. Next year, hopefully we don't have to do that. If we had a great winter, we'd have enough water, we'd be fine inside our water budget. We could water those areas, but the first page is definitely those areas get turned off because they're just not important to the golf facility. And I, quite frankly, even to Rossmore, I don't think they'd find just going native and natural. They don't really affect anything, except maybe your, your view, which I understand. Uh, but we have to get used to that. I mean, I think everybody in California kind of has to get used to that. There is a new reality that everyone has to learn, whether it's at your home outside the gate or your home inside the gate or your business. Water's different than it was 20 years ago, and we just have to understand that. So the second page of our playbook is turning down some water in other areas. And uh, when I go to Blake's uh, report, which I'll pick up on here in your comment, Ken, uh, you can see the amount of water that we've used um, compared to last year. And he's had a couple of meetings with um, Fania from the East Bay Mountain Landscape Water Conservation Representative. And um, she's been extremely supportive, which is nice. Anytime we get East Bay Mud that says we're extremely, that we're supportive is, is wonderful. It's nice that they come out, have meetings, and actually support what we do and think what we're doing is correct. There are some people that are in our business that aren't, uh, but we've removed a lot of the sprinklers. Uh, Blake took her on a tour of that, um, and uh, she was happy to see our plan for reducing the footprint of, of the uh, turf. Uh, the 8% surcharge we talked about has happened. Uh, over a period of time, some of these areas are already off. Some will happen soon. 
but the area along the perimeter heads of number eight Creekside, the lost walkway there, already turned off. Um, the out of play areas on uh, 7T also, uh, and number two, Green and Dollar Ranch, we talked about that. The fairway slopes on number four and 10 holes on Dollar, number two on Creekside, the large slope on the left. So some of these perimeter heads were already narrowing down which means you're going to see them dry out. So the answer for your clubs or anyone you talk to is, yes, we are narrowing it down. If we're going to stay inside our budget and be able to answer the call of that 8%, then we've got to do it. And um, so the second page of our playbook is basically what you see on this page here. It's the areas that are least affecting golf, but also least affecting um, sight lines of homes, okay? They're far enough away from homes. The next page of the playbook, unfortunately, does affect homes. It would be like the areas on seven eight of dollar on the left hand side, all the way down there. We talked about that area before. Uh, both sides of number three on dollar. Um, you know that doesn't affect Creekside as much because Creekside is contiguous with its holes and the slope kind of protects the left on two. And, you know the walkway is what it is. Blake and I have talked about they're going to be redoing the, um, the medians, and we would like to see a, a proposal with, with, with uh, work with Jeff on a little bit is to uh, take that median look and actually move it over to the sidewalk in the area that's going down uh, on eight and seven on Creekside and just permanently have some area in there that looks like the median. So we're not watering, move the sprinklers in, redo that whole area, and have it look like it's part of the median which would help us with water and long-term be a solution to uh, narrowing our water. So we make a decision every year, do we take it out of play, do we put it in play, does it look terrible? Let's just convert it. It's out of play anyway. There's, if the golf ball's over there, you really get a bad striker. You've really got that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying I saw you there the other day. I took that up, but, okay. But uh, anyway, you, you can do some of these areas that are, are really not in play. But before we just water to water, uh, we don't need to do that anymore. So we have a playbook in place. We're doing what we can. And it even goes farther because the next paragraph we talked about is really important. The improvements on the 15th tier in Dollar Ranch are nearly complete. The main goal of the improvement project is to reduce the amount of water that we use the area going forward. New sprinkler rotors. Place 27 feet apart, allow for a 27 by 81 tier and be irrigated. All the sprinklers between the T and fairway have been removed and a mulch will be placed for the next few weeks. So we're talking about creating islands. We've kind of done this a little bit before, but the 15th D now becomes the model because the way those rotors work, it literally only hits grass. So every T in Rossmore will eventually look like that. It will be 27 feet wide. That's wide enough for a T. You've got the 15, look at it right now. Some of our T's, like a good example, you get number two a dollar. Uh, we had the land, we built the T 20 something years ago, but the T is probably 50 feet across at number two, the part three. There is no reason that needs to be 50 feet across. Um, so narrowing that up on number two will be a plan probably for next year. I can see the mulch line coming in from the first hole, going around that T, going around the front, going around the whole T, narrowing the T down to 27 feet. Over a year or five years or 10 years, that's the enormous amount of water that we can that we can take care of. And it's not going to affect play. And it, visually, if it's done right, it can actually enhance play. Because there's some areas there we can't you know, you, you can see them now cracking, falling apart, we have trouble with water. We should just convert it long term. Um, so you're going to see this 27 foot number continuously in my reports as we go forward because it's it's a number that we can water exactly the square footage we need to have good tea width, good grass, but also conserve at an at a, a ever increasing rate. Okay. So these are new sprinkler heads? Yeah. Yeah, it's a new head we're putting in there. Totally different. I mean, the sprinklers were put in here originally were just all 60 foot, six inch that did this. And we thought it was state of the arts years ago. But we're now getting to the point where these rotors are really fine 
may actually be better coverage. So your coverage will be better on your team long run. You'll have better grasp on the teams. So you're not giving up anything except we're just not watering wide swaths. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, I live across from uh, Seventh uh, T on Creekside, and since I moved here, oh yeah, back this part. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> complain, complain. Uh, <laughs> since I moved here, I noticed that uh, the the sprinklers on uh, that water the tea box and the first part of the uh, so-called fairway. That I mean, water is everywhere. There's a there's a big uh, walkway. Mm -hmm. The bridge that goes across, sure, that's got more water than the grass does. I mean, it's it's just filling out all over. Well, when you go sixty foot six, six inches. I mean, there isn't a perfect plan for that, and you know that's that's exactly right. Yeah. And so it's refining your system. We've done a lot. We've taken what twelve acres out of play. Like and I feel we can do another twelve. Yeah. Um, easily. Yeah. Um, and refining these sprinklers down, like areas on every tee. We still have the fairway sprinklers, which are 60 foot six inches, because those that's covering a large area. That that wouldn't change. We're talking really around um, the T areas. And and you know, I, I guess the next thing after that, if we're in a severe drought, would be once you've done the roughs, and uh, the next thing would be probably hundred yards off every T, you just turn it off. That'd be the next thing. You know, if you had to. And get down to where it's just greens, tees, and fairways. Question: The project that's going along um, Old Four on Creekside is that the pump up to the? Yeah, the, the, it, it is. Yeah, that is a um, that's a backup to our backup. Yeah, right now we're doing everything we can to make sure that we can always have control of that water as it comes through that lake first hole area. A lot of drainage through there. I don't know if anybody's ever stopped at the manhole cover that's on the first fairway. Um, it's actually like a, a metal grate. But even this time of year, if you walk over to it and you put your ear down, you're here. There's water rushing through you know, that's the neighborhood. Huh? You don't have to get that close. No, I mean it's it's it comes rushing through there. Well. That's where it outlets. So the sooner we can kind of capture that before it ends up in the creek, and there has been, as we talked about in these committee meetings, the chance of losing the creek water. There is that chance. The more we can capture it before it gets there. So that's part of that, that project. I do that. So water, I mean, who knew uh, 20 years ago when we were uh, even taking care of the golf course or 30 years ago, and now, now we've done the mulch areas for about eight or nine, who knew we'd be talking about this being the number one topic that we do, but it is, it is what it is. That's what we're dealing with on a day to day basis. Probably the number one topic that Blake and I talk about when we meet, we, we talk three times a week, something four times a week. Um, we're successfully reducing the amount of clover on both golf courses. So that's because we've sprayed that out. And we recently applied an organic brand new fertilizer called greens. Basically, they need a boost, and that's something that you do. Some golf courses will do this uh, every couple of weeks. We do it um, you know, maybe three or four times a year. That's all our greens need. We're not running them on razor edge, but give us time. You can see they're starting to, to fight a little bit. You can uh, see you know, just slight patchiness or brownies. You put that in there to give them a, a little boost, resulting in healthier turf, just give them a little help. And um, I think that's it. One of the things that I recently in there is that at the planning committee yesterday, as Ted talked about, um, there was let's again let's just pass those around. Um, before we get to the point where we're turning off the water right along home sites, right now, as I said, it's street side things like that. Um, Jeff in the planning committee wrote this yesterday and this is going to go out uh, as a message on the Nixle. It'll also be in the newspaper and it will also be um, you know put in my news article wherever we can put it to let people know. And basically it just discusses that we are in a mega drought and it's continuing and our efforts are to conserve water as much as possible and also stay within budget. 
So this is the explanation you'll see soon. And you're welcome to read that, but I think it's it's well done. And Jeff did a great job on this. Um, and you know, want to emphasize that it is, as it says on here, when we talked about it, it's it's short-term answers right now. I mean, we hope we don't fight this battle year after year after year because it gets harder year after year, obviously. But if it does, you know, we'll have to adjust. Just have to. With that recycling plan, continue to narrow the landscape, continue to conserve. I mean, I don't want to scare anybody, but I've even told Jeff we should look into artificial surfaces. I know that sounds scary, but you know what? 30, 40 years from now, we should be ahead of the curve, not behind it. And that might be something we have to work at. Haven't they started using some um, artificial turf? On the median, so Rossmore Parkway. I don't know, but they have that median, so Rossmore Parkway. I don't think so. No. Think so. We're, we're redoing the median, so we have 30 and dollars of supplies, but I have not heard not of it. Somebody mentioned there was some artificial turf. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to go there, but I think your mind has to be open to all answers down the road. Um, I, I have talked to Jeff about the opportunity, maybe. Proposing to the board, changing one of the practice screens into artificial, the one where the bunker is, perhaps, just to try it. I think it'd be a good investment. If you have trouble with that growing that area anyway, let's make it artificial. Let's see what it looks like, how people react. It may actually be something we have to do someday. And I think we just have to be prepared for that. And whether it's just the practice areas, which means there's no maintenance, you know, it'd be easy, very little maintenance. Uh, so that would help that part of the budget. Um, but I think you have to think outside the box and continue to because we're going to be pressed. And oh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Just a couple of comments and, a, and a one question. The 15 fold, what you did up there, it is really nice. It's, it, you almost want to have a picnic up there. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful, a beautiful oh. setup, and also having the carts where you can drive. I don't think our close. friend up there would watch <laughs> 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 Could we, could we buy them a picnic to go up there? Would that yeah. But, but the, <laughs> driving the cart right up to where yeah. we can get out, that is a big plus because everybody was pulling off in the grass anyway and destroying it. You know, it's just a dirt spot. You know, it, it's funny. That's something that we've realized for what, yeah. years, right? Yeah. It's just one of those things you finally get to. It's nothing that we didn't recognize. We don't, we see carts go up there all the time. It, it just took us that long to get to it, but. And also, I want to thank you for uh, moving the tee box on the fourth hole on Creek side on the other side of the creek because I can drive the green now. <laughs> <laughs> and it still is a par four. So it's, so it's probably the only one that I have a chance on birdie on. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, it's very nice. uh, my other question is so I really commend what you and Blake are doing uh, to help control the water situation, looking at every possibility that we could do. Uh, looking into the future for what might have to come. But how is that going to sit with East Bay Mud when they look at our what we're doing this year and then how hard they got to squeeze us next year? Yeah, it's, you know, if we keep lowering our number and they want a 40% off of this, we were here before, yeah. now we're way down here. Are they going to ask every year? It's a great question. I mean, Tim and I have talked about that several times ourselves, are we being too good citizens? You know, does, do we set the bar so high mm -hmm. that we yeah, ruin it? I'm worried I mean, about that. That's why this relationship with someone like Anya is important that she realizes, ah, uh, you know, she put the 8% on, she's doing that to everybody, but she also realizes that we're being good citizens. And we, when we asked about, hey, is there a reduction coming right now? No, not to you guys, you guys are so, you know, we, for her, in her eyes, we're doing a great job and you want to keep that relationship. Um, but long-term, you know, I don't know. I, I think you have to go into it doing the best you can and, and, and that is a concern. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, but I think it's better to be, my view is it's better to be ahead of it and explain later what we've done than to get your hand slapped and then you feel like you're behind. Yeah. That's just, you know, my view. Do you think you can continue to do this uh, for the number of years it's going to take before 
the water plant gets built. I mean, even if it's, everything is a go, it, we're talking what five years, maybe. maybe. We we have five years of work in front of us. So what we can do here, no, I mean, no question about it. it, it no matter how much money we had, no matter uh, it just time, just the time it takes for this to happen and for us to get these things done. It's not like we have a work crew that doesn't have anything else to do. We are doing this on top of our daily maintenance and we only have 12 guys. Now we do have an outside contractor that helps us with some of these projects, but we only have so much money, we only have so much time. You know, people like to play the golf course, we, we've got to leave it so if we were to do all this thing, golf course would be out of play in some areas. We are on the fourth tee right now. Or other things. So, you know, there, there's definitely five years of work there. There's no question. And, and whether that buys us enough time, um, I see. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We've had to pivot several times already. <laughs> do you find yourself uh, constrained from doing the work that would involve, uh, like, uh, taking grass out, putting mulch in, and so forth, in order to help us with the water usage. Uh, restraint from a budgetary standpoint. Well, uh, I wouldn't say constraint. I'd say we've done it in a very methodical method that's made sense. Could you tomorrow hire larger crews to? Yeah, but I don't know if that's really necessarily smart. To, to just try and do it all. I, I like what we're doing. We're, we're in a we're in a pattern right now. We we see some benefits to what we're doing. We're continuing that process. Again, we've pivoted as we've gone along. If let's say we go back five six years ago and we we just go, this is the plan. Let's do it tomorrow. Well, we've learned stuff during this time. For instance, the twenty seven foot with the new rotors. Well, if we had done something six years ago. We'd be redoing it today because new things happen. We understand more. We learn more. There's different, so different methods. We go, wow, the gorilla hair really works. You know, we didn't know that eight years ago when we got started. So I, I think it's better to go methodically through and just kind of be able to change and 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 move with the process and learn and, and do it that way. And then we don't have to recover and go, wow, that was a terrible decision. You know what I mean? And, and, and maybe two areas we don't need to do. So I think we're, it's probably better to do it the way we're doing it long, long term. I don't know if everybody else feels about it, but I feel as a manager, it's worked out pretty well. Okay. Was there anything from uh, Ippy? Or no? I didn't know. He gave me the new Marshall schedule this morning. Looks like everybody, I, the, the crew's doing a good job. They have some, we have some really good people right now uh, as a group. Um, so I think um, things are, are good with the, uh, and Dwight's are a great backup. Is there, a, backup is there a waiting list for people who want to be marshal? I've, I've, had, had, a, I've had a couple of inquiries, people, and I've given the names to Dickie. Um, so I guess I would say yes, there's probably a couple of people on the list, but at the moment, I think the crew we have is pretty solid. I don't see, you know, I say that now, any, any change to media. Yeah, we have one. I was going to ask the question. When we first moved here, there was always a marshal out later in the day, like four to six or seven. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I see, because I kind of have a window on a little bit of the world on the golf course, and I see some crazy stuff going on sometimes. <laughs> okay. And I'm just wondering, has that ever been a consideration to have a marshal? You know, we haven't talked about it lately, but, um, but we could. We could talk about that. Yeah. We've done a number of different things. At one time, Dickie was doing that. He was our evening guy. So he came out and did that. Um, and then at one time, we had the marshal who worked in the morning, then came back out for an hour and did a little oh. round. So we haven't, we just, I haven't felt the need, but if you see stuff that, that needs to be addressed, we could look at that. We certainly have plenty of the evenings now. Mm -hmm. That four o'clock time is popular around yesterday. It got to that four o'clock time, and there was almost an hour on both golf courses. I was here, uh, Jerry and I, and we were seven people out continuously uh, at the, on both golf courses. It was busy, so perhaps that is something to think about. Okay, is there any unfinished business? 
Is there any new business? All right, the next meeting is Friday. Well, um, Sorry. <laughs> Norberto, mm -hmm. are we going to, um, I said I would kind of Okay, yeah, Pat's been talking about it too. We've talked the last couple of days, and it'd be nice if uh, clubs kind of got together. I'm going to get a date from Blake. His last day is the 15th of August. Um, so, you know, we're inside for about a month now. So, I'm sure we can do something there in that last week, whether it's the, exactly on the 15th or whether it's because I think the 15th is a Monday on August. So, it might be that day that we would like to do something or maybe uh, Thursday or Friday before. And I will get with Blake and, and I'll send it to you, Teddy, I'll send it to you, Pat, and you two can- Yeah. Can just, right. just, just to uh, elaborate, uh, the Mets Club yearly has taken the opportunity uh, at Cinco de Mayo to uh, say thanks to the uh, groundskeepers. Um, this year that changed with a, uh, an event that took place on the, the 5th of May. So we didn't have the, uh, the luncheon that we have for them. So this year we're going to do it uh, sort of like after the fact. And uh, it's a great opportunity at the same time to say thank you to Norberto. We haven't organized it yet. Uh, the question was whether we do it as, as a men's club, but like we've done it every year because it's honestly something easier to organize, but if we do it as a joint club arrangement, uh, how do we do that? Who gets involved, who pays for it, it gets to be a big thing. Uh, so I'm really not sure how to go about that yet, but I, I put it out there that it's a possibility. And it'll be something the clubs can talk about. Yeah. We'll get the thing. And if you guys think on doing it, I'm sure they're happy to have a good life for sure. It would be a four club uh, opportunity. Okay, the next meeting is Friday, August 12th, here at 9 a.m. I'd like to say something. Oh, Bert, sorry. Bert, outstanding job. <laughs> the first yeah. meeting. Are we done? That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did really well. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.